Now, <clears throat> um, one of the things that Zimmel specifically predicted is that if you're embedded in a triple, in a triad like that, it's going to be more difficult to extricate yourself from those relationships that you're embedded in than it is if you are just one-on-one -on -one with, with somebody in a, a soul dyad. So obviously the prediction from that is that Zimmelian triples, Zimmelian uh, relationships, those embedded in a triple, will be more stable over time than those that are not. And uh, to check that out, of course, I do what every good self-respecting network person does, and that is test that kind of prediction on the Newcomb data, which is everybody's first choice of, of testing whatever they, their local favorite uh, new idea might be when you want to look at things happening over time. So <clears throat> let me pull up that. And if we so the question here is going to be the stability of uh, uh, different ties as a function of whether they're uh, Zemelian or not. And to do that, as I said, what you do is you just commonly everybody uses the Newcomb data because he's got this wonderful data that starts at time zero before anybody knew anybody. He got these transfer students who came in as juniors and he gave them a free place to live as long as they were willing to fill out a questionnaire on their network relations among these 17 students once a week so he could follow the development and the um, uh, the building of these relationships and the formation of these re relationships over that full semester period of time and um, <clears throat> the question that a lot of people have asked and i'm going to follow up on is uh, if a student chooses another person as a friend in 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 the sequence of 15 weeks at time t, whatever that time is, what is the probability they will then choose that same person again at time t plus delta? And delta can be anything. It could be one week later. Delta could be five weeks later or even 14 weeks later. Um, so there are a lot of ranges of, of uh, delta that you could observe um, for this question. But really, uh, the, that, that was only the starting place for my, my, my real question that I was interested in was, does that probability of observing somebody uh, being chosen again after delta weeks, is that affected by the micro context in which that choice was made at time t? And specifically, you can think of all the possible ties you can have in a network as being one of three types. They can be asymmetric, that is, I choose you as a friend, you don't choose me. They can be so symmetric, that means I choose you as a friend, you choose me as a friend, it's a mutual tie, but we don't have some other third party that we both mutually choose so that we would be uh, in, in, embedded in a group. And the truth is um, uh, those are considered stronger ties than the simple asymmetric tie. I'm gonna call those soul symmetric ties ties that are mutual but not embedded in a group. And then there's a Zemelian tie, a tie that's both mutual and there's at least a third person within the context who both parties have a mutual tie to so that it becomes embedded in that triple. And I call that a Zemelian tie. All ties can be characterized as either asymmetric, sole symmetric, or Zemelian. Now the question is, at time t, if you're asymmetric, what's the chance you'll be choosing that person again next time after delta weeks? Or if you're so symmetric at time t, what's the chance you'll be choosing that same person after delta weeks? Or if you're Zemelian at time t with that person, what's the chance you'll choose that person again after delta weeks? And the question, uh, becomes, um, would, will the answer to those questions be different according to that context? 
and uh, it's, it's very nice that um, uh, uh, Newcomb allows us to, to look at that question. And these are the results. Now, this is a chart, and I realize it's a little bit hard to, to see, but let me, it's pretty simple. Uh, over in the y-axis here, we have simply the probability that the tie reoccurs after delta weeks. And across the bottom here, we have delta. So the first category here is delta of one week, and this is, an, a, this is a, a, a compilation of, of the probability of ties for everybody across all the one week differences. So it could be the difference between week two and week three, or week seven and week eight, and so on. And this is the compilation, this, this set right here is a compilation for all uh, deltas of equal to two weeks, delta of three weeks, all the way up to a delta of 14 weeks. And each of these deltas has three bars above them. One of them is for the asymmetric ties at time t, the other is for the sole symmetric ties at time t, and the third is the for the um, uh, Zemelian ties at time t. And two things we notice right away. There is a general degradation of tie as a function of delta. That makes sense. The longer the time period goes by, the less likely we're going to see it replicated. I mean, that's not a big surprise. But the other thing that really becomes dominant is in this picture is that there is a big difference between uh, the probability of a tie surviving those delta weeks and uh, whether that uh, tie was initially in the context of being asymmetric or sosymmetric or zemillion. The top set of lighter bars here is the plot of Zemelian ties. And what we see are the Zemelian ties have far greater stability over those 15 weeks than either of the other two groups of ties, which I'll get to in a second. As a matter of fact, even after 13 weeks, we're still finding that the survival rate of Zemelian ties is greater than either of the other two ties after only four weeks. So Zemelian ties are quite stable over time. The other thing to notice, though, that's kind of interesting and not expected, is that the survival rate of sole symmetric ties, which are these sort of medium gray bars here, um, or darker gray, I should say, down here at the bottom, are actually less stable less stable than the asymmetric ties, which are weaker, which are these uh, medium gray, kind of the, the first of the, of the three vertical bars. So these, this plot here is of the asymmetric ties. And this plot here is of the uh, sole symmetric ties. In other words, for a good number of deltas, good number of change of, of time delays before we check again to see if the tie is still there, from a delta of four weeks all the way up to a delta of 12 weeks or, or 13 weeks, what we find is that asymmetric ties are more stable by a lot than sole symmetric ties. So in other words, again, what we think of as being important symmetry, the norm of reciprocity, uh, that stability of, of if I like you and, and you like me, that's gonna give us a, a mutual stability that's really gonna help, misses the point. It's not the, mis it's not the mutuality, it is not the reciprocity. Is it's despite the, the claim of the universal norm of reciprocity, it's not the net reciprocity that's making things more stable. It's the fact that it's embedded in a group. And many symmetric mutual ties are embedded in a group. And we have mistakenly assumed it's because of that reciprocity rather than because uh, of the Zemelian uh, micro context in which those, uh, those, those ties actually happen. <clears throat> okay. 